Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Cash flow impact of depreciation due to taxes. Get ready, take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we are in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Information left side, fill in that information, blue area, right side. We have our information difference down below. It's going to be depreciation. We're going to maximize depreciation out in the second half and minimize it in the first half and then take a look at what the difference will be as we do so given the fact that we have our tax rate at 35 percent in this case so first calculation no depreciation so this is going to be a fairly straightforward calculation so i'm going to say that we have the earnings before depreciation and taxes which would be the 1 million in this case then typically we would then be taking into consideration the depreciation and assuming it would be deductible for taxes and having a tax implication, this time it being zero, so nothing being impacted at that point for it. And so we're going to then give us our earnings before taxes. Earnings before taxes then is still, of course, the one million minus zero or the one million. And then we'll calculate our taxes, taxes, which will be the one million times the rate, which we're saying is the 35%. That's going to be the 350000 So we're going to go to the font group, underline that one. And then we have our earnings after taxes. The earnings after taxes then being equal to the $1 million minus the taxes of the 350000 we just calculated, leaving us with the three hundred. I mean the 650000 after the taxes. And, that, and now if we were to pick up the depreciation, adding it back in, if there were any, that's what we would do here to put it on a cash basis cash flow after taxes then would be the 650 plus zero that's what we would have now let's think about our cash flow we're thinking depreciation here is something that is not a cash flow item remember that what the depreciation is is something that basically we purchase something that's going to be affecting uh, more than one period therefore when purchasing it we put it on the books at an as an asset and then we allocate the cost, therefore expensing it at a different point in time than the cash may have been paid. So that's going to be the idea on an accrual basis. Makes sense for an accrual basis. But then we want to take a look at the cash basis. Oftentimes when we're making decision-making processes, it's useful to look at it at a cash basis. The depreciation complicates things because we can't just pull it out because we have the tax impact as well. So we want to think about what the tax impact would be. So if I go back in and, and say, okay, well, well, now let's assume that we get to depreciate the entire thing is depreciation, right? We can depreciate the full amount and just look at what the maximum kind of tax implication then would be. We would say then the, the earnings before taxes, we're going to say is now the 1 million. And we're saying depreciation is 1 million. And that means that our, our uh, earnings before taxes then would be zero. So earnings before taxes, we're saying are zero. I'm going to go to the font group and underline. This is going to be equal to the 1 million minus the 1 million. If we then apply out our taxes, so we're going to say the tax calculation is going to be that 35% of zero because now we have zero earnings after the taxes. That would be then zero. Underlining this item, that would give us our uh, earnings after taxes which of course still zero, zero minus zero. But then we're going to add back the depreciation, which was a non-cash flow item. If we add that back in, we'd say, okay, the depreciation now, after having a tax impact, we're going to pull it back. And that's going to be the cash flow that we're going to be taking into consideration here. Uh, let's just call it cash flow, which is going to be this plus this, or the 1 million so now we've got the 1 million cash flow and if we take a look at the difference then between the two and, and concentrate on the difference in that uh, depreciation impact due to and, and the tax impact we have the 650 up top minus the uh, 1 million down below we have a difference of the 300 and so the idea here being that up top we have the same cash flow right at the end of the day before taxes we had basically the same cash flow because the depreciation is not a cash flow item but up top due to the the impact of the taxes since we didn't get to 
take into consideration the depreciation, we had the higher net income, we're assuming taxable income here, resulting in a different cash flow due to the taxes, which were caused by the depreciation, even though depreciation isn't a cash flow type of item in general. Whereas down here, we're looking at a situation where if we take the full amount of depreciation, we maximize it out, bringing our taxable income down to zero, then we have no tax impact, but the de and the depreciation basically eliminated the taxes if we were to imagine that scenario kind of maximizing the impact of the depreciation and looking the, at the difference in the cash flow due to taxes even though we're talking about something that's a non-cash flow item because there is cash flow related to the taxes if it's going to be a deductible item so once again the taxes are going to be something that's going to confuse us and whenever we do these long-term projects we're looking long term we have to take into consideration the fact that on an accrual basis, we're going to be putting stuff on the books as an asset and then depreciating it in a different point in time, possibly, than when the cash is being paid for it. But when we make the decision for what, what we want to do for these long-term projects, using a cash flow basis is often what we want to do so we can see what, when we're going to get our return and, and whatnot, what level of risk will be involved, which we'll look at in future presentations. And uh, we also have to take into effect also the tax implications, realizing here that as we look at the depreciation, we also need to be considering the fact that the tax depreciation may differ than the book depreciation. So that can complicate things. And we want to keep that in mind as we look into and analyze these long-term decisions, long-term decision-making processes into the future, where we basically often are trying to use some kind of cash flow analysis to do so.